Well, our first guest now served St. Louis County as a judge for nearly two decades. And now he's turning a page in a new career. Three months ago, he took over as the executive director of the Duluth Superior Community Foundation. The foundation promotes private giving for the public good in the Northland. Sean Florkey is joining us to share why philanthropy is more important than ever now that we are all living in pandemic times together. Sean, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah, you had a career here. change. You moved from the bench uh, to philanthropic work. Why the change? The board asked me the same thing. They said, why would you come work for us? And I told them a story I heard 17 years ago. It was Don Coyas, who's a Mohican elder, shared it. It's three sisters come to the river. I bet you've heard this before, Denny. First sisters, the babies are drowning in the water. First sister jumps in and starts saving kids but isn't making any progress. Second sister thinks I can teach them to swim. They'll be able to help. Still not making enough progress. They look at the third sister and they say, why aren't you in? How can you stand there? And instead she turned and ran away. And you know where she was running. She was running upstream to figure out who was putting babies in the water in the first place. Yeah, great story. And I story. said to him, I'll do third sister with you. That's can we change our community in a way that that kids are safe and whole and have every opportunity and every chance to do everything you and I have done in our lives. Mm -hmm. So how does the foundation fit into that? So we, we have the privilege of connecting donors with mission around giving into the community. We have 440 different funds that we give money into. You wouldn't believe the things <laughs> I keep bumping into. So we're, we're sharing money into the community. It's, it's private giving for the public good. Um, it's people who share and share and share to mm -hmm. make a difference. Prior to taking this position, did you have any real idea <laughs> no. as to the fullness of the <laughs> no. foundation? I what still it don't. I'm still <laughs> learning, man. Um, no, I had no idea. The scope, we're in 10 counties. We, we have work going on in so many different spheres. And the conversations have been just fantastic. People giving, yeah. people receiving, people who receive then give as well. Um, kind of a generous community. It's not that one person brings everything and one person receives. It's that we all bring, we all receive, we all share together, you know. Is there a new vision you bring to the foundation? I don't, I don't know that it's new vision. Um, I, it's a beautiful place with a bunch of people who are doing really good work. Um, I might be louder and wilder, so we'll see. But they, they want to keep doing good work in the community to change the community. Sean, talk to us about the generosity of the people who live here. Um, we, got a, we got a check a couple of weeks ago from a couple who said, um, and it was part of the COVID campaign, but they, they had gotten their stimulus check and they said, we don't need this. Give it to somebody. Isn't that nice? Yeah, so we took that, we put it into uh, COVID-19 fund. We've given away $645,000 in the last year to help with COVID relief, um, working with other partners. People are generous, yeah. generous, generous. Wow, that's really good to it's, hear. It's really something. Yeah. Who are the first ladies of the hillside? Tell us about <laughs> that. <laughs> that's, that's part of the story. There's, there's, We've helped a little bit with some work at, at Steve O'Neill, and they are folks who are, who are getting on their feet, getting connected. They're, they're moms who are raising their kids in a beautiful way, and now they're reaching out and helping other folk. It's that generous community. It's, mm -hmm. They need some help, we're helping, and now they're reaching out and helping too. Is philanthropy, Sean, more important now than ever before, maybe during times like this when we live in a pandemic, that'll be known forever by the, the gen next generation or two of people. I, absolutely. And, and, and philanthropy in partnership with everybody else. It, you know, we're talking with the city, county, school district, other, other partners. How do we all come to the table? And you know that about Duluth. It's this beautiful place where people come to the table. How do we come to the table and all work together in a way to, to help folks and help it, better, help it be a better community for our kids? Mm -hmm. Do you have a long-range plan yourself or a goal you want to reach in the next, say, five years with the foundation? We want to, we want to focus on, on changing those outcomes for kids, and that's a big, big deal. So five years is probably short term. But how do, we, how do we figure out the one, two, three, four, five things that we need to do upstream in our community with other partners to really shift those outcomes? Yeah. Right? How did your work as a judge 
help make this transition? I mean, you, you, you obviously yeah. were, were working with, with parents and kids yeah. from time to time uh, on the bench. Yeah, and I, and I studied kind of the human condition and, and the way that we kind of come together and try and help people. And now I'm translating it and trying to, trying to go into community building, not just courtrooms and people's and individual lives, but bigger and broader. Yeah. yeah. Two terms, equality and justice. Yeah. How do those terms fit into what you're doing now? COVID has absolutely shown wide the gaps in our community. Some folks are hit and hit and hit and hit. And the same folks who have had a hard time finding equality, finding justice, finding open doors. Um, so it'll be, it'll be the lead in what we do. Mm -hmm. A lot of the COVID relief is about building communities that are healthier and healthier. It's not just about yeah. um, helping somebody out of that scrape. It's about how do we, again, how do we change yeah. the outcomes? Can you share a little bit, Sean, about the million dollars in grants that have been given during the COVID period? They've gone to lots of different, um, mostly we're granting to nonprofit folk who are then helping other folks. They've gone to, um, one of them was Steve O'Neill. There, no, there was no internet capability there, so we helped him get a little bit of internet through Molly Harney and mm -hmm. uh, the First Ladies. Can you imagine? I had a court hearing where the family was sitting in a car because they were outside the school getting Wi-Fi because that was the only way in. So even that ability to, to get internet access, you can't survive COVID in our culture without internet access. So, the world has changed. Yeah, and just being able to make a real difference for a bunch of people right there. How has the pandemic then influenced the foundation's work? I think what we're doing and what everybody's doing, again, back to Duluth being a, a generous community, is we're partnering and partnering and partnering. So, you know, I'm talking with Tony at Northland Foundation. I'm talking with Don Ness at Ordeen. Talk to Joan at Lloyd K. Um, everybody's talking and trying to figure out what are you doing? How do we help? What can we do together? What are we missing? Are we overlapping? Um, there's this collaborative spirit that I think is just so inspiring. So it sounds like you are working well with the other foundations. In yeah, I'm trying to catch up. Oh. I'm the new kid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they're, they're all at the table. The, uh, E3 out on the west side, everybody's at the table trying to figure out how to help and how to fit and then how to transition out of the immediate needs of the yeah. pandemic into, well, what do we need next? Citywide broadband, things like that. How do we, yeah. how do we improve going forward? Which, which brings the question, has the foundation learned anything from the pandemic? Well, you, you learn that people are still generous. Giving continued. People continue to give and care, even when the whole world looks like it's tumped upside down. Um, so generosity, and then we've all learned that the needs are just writ large. Yeah. Writ large. And certainly the needs were there, were they not long before the pandemic? Yeah, ever yeah, hit? yeah. We see it better now. I think as a culture and community, we see it better now. Through and you talk glasses. to your neighbors who haven't been able to pay rent because they couldn't work, and what's that going to look like? So there's a there's a lot of anxiety out there. Do you think there'd be any changes to the foundation in post, uh, post pandemic times? Well, there has to be, right? We have to learn. So the answer is yes. What that looks like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you're not a learning organization, then you, then you don't survive. Your immediate goal? Immediate goal for me is to learn and learn and learn. But what, but, but what I'm really, what, the thing I'm focusing on is having those conversations so, so we're working together. We're not in a yeah. little silo and you're doing your thing on how do we work together in a way that, that meets the needs. Sure. Sean, it's been a pleasure. Oh, it's good to see you. Good to see you Talk again. About thanks travel for, thanks and for being here. What the world will look like <laughs> when go. it gets on its Sean feet. Sean Forkey, CEO, yeah. President, Duluth Area Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, thanks for having me, Danny.